All right, hey guys, let's get Brock here. Today we're going to be looking at the, uh, the Assault Weapon Pack. I'm sure you've already noticed in the series, uh, we've been using it. Uh, the Outland series, that is. Originally I was going to use something else, but uh, uh, Harbinger Ace over here was on the series, and uh, he held me at gunpoint, so now I'm forced to use it. Excuse you. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, assault AWP, uh, for short, or Assault Weapons Pack is a comprehensive mod pack that intends to augment the vanilla sandbox without being utterly OP. Uh, I think as much as we all enjoy putting the most overpowered shit into our servers as possible, uh, that can only work against shielded ships, it's uh, refreshing to have something that kind of works within how Space Engineers is designed. Uh, makes for a much more exciting dynamic. I don't know, Ace, does that sound about right? Effectively, that's how I designed the pack to be. Yeah, so... Is there anything else you want to mention on the Assault Weapons Pack? Like your ethos behind it or anything? or is that I mean, you got the basic premise down. I didn't want to balance uh, any of the weapons around um, shield mods. I didn't want to balance it around any kind of specific gameplay style. I wanted to keep it within the general framework of Space Engineers. I balanced in favor of gameplay rather than quote-unquote realism. Uh, yeah, I think it works really well, especially with Outlands, which is a primarily unshielded, low mod count server design. Only really the Eternity has shields, and that's just for convenience sake as a one-off ship. Effectively, the 20mm point defense gun is... I mean, it's a point defense gun. Its intention is to shoot down missiles, it's meant to take out high, any, any kind of high-speed entity. So, uh, mi missiles, characters flying around, you know, spider hordes... Okay. Uh, it does work effectively against uh, lightly armed small grid vessels, but against characters and uh, fighters, they work incredibly well. Yeah, I think nothing truly works against missiles right now, as virtue of uh, that's just the that, that's being just the targeting kind of code. Yeah. Unlike the twenty millimeter point defense gun, the forty three millimeter auto cannon is a dedicated ship to ship weapon. It is the effectively the basic ship-to-ship -ship weapon. It is not any kind of heavy uh, heavy cannon. It is simply designed to throw metal downrange and uh, rip apart light armor. It is specifically designed to attack larger targets. Although it does work against personnel and bugs and whatnot, uh, that job is much better suited to the 20mm. Okay. Yeah, it seems very versatile in the sense. It might not have the explosive blast of a missile, but it probably hits with a higher degree of, or higher hit rate depending on, you know, because it doesn't care about traversal as much. The 150mm autocannon is a light anti-ship uh, uh, area of effect weapon. In, in purpose, it's uh, a lighter missile weapon, and in terms of the game's code, it is also a missile weapon. The intent of the 150mm autocannon is simply a light armor cracker. Where the Did snuggles it? is uh, going kaput. Did it just explode? <laughs> okay. <Cool>. <laughs> <laughs> so unlike the 43 millimeter autocannon, which is designed to cut through light armor, the 150 millimeter is just meant to crack it and break it open. Yeah. It is. It is simply meant to break light systems, light metal plating, and tear it apart. Is it just me, or is the missile velocity faster, or is that just the 150 millimeter has? Uh, Quite a bit of uh, velocity. The 220 millimeter missile pod is a burst fire uh, designed simply to inflict as much splash damage as possible across a target. It is not designed as a uh, as a precision strike weapon. It is purely designed to inflict the maximum amount of damage over a wide area as possible. Yeah. The missile pod specifically works different than the turret variant in that it fires rapid bursts of missiles instead of just one large volley. Yeah, it's kind of cool because um, uh, the vanilla fix system just shoots all at once, and not only is that kind of inefficient, right? Like, if you get, if you get a hit, you get hit with all the missiles, but this allows a little more guiding the spray onto target, so to speak, how you would do with, like, a fixed tracer gun. And it also looks cooler, right? Because I think uh, yes. everyone's been running scripts to have volley fire because it looks cooler, and you also have the benefit of being able to, you know, 
move the spray onto target, right? I'd say like this would this would make a lot of sense on a smaller ship, right? Because it is axial, right? So you want a you want something like a small, nimble Corvette, or you could mount it on the broadsides of a frigate. Okay. All right. Next up, the uh, I think this one's everyone's favorite, probably the most popular weapon in the series right now, if I had to guess in terms oh, of yeah. ship usage. So as aforementioned, the 220 millimeter missile battery is designed simply to launch a large salvo of missiles downrange. But like the two, uh, like the missile pod, it is designed to inflict damage over a wide area. They fire the exact same missile. The missile has all the same properties. It is uh, simply a different, uh, a different application of the same weapon. I would not be surprised if we start seeing a shift away from the 220s to a more hybrid or even focused approach of 150s and, uh, was it 43 mils? Because I yeah. think a big issue a lot of the players are having, because it's a combination of fast ships, small profiles, and shit keen targeting code, uh, the two twenties aren't always hitting, and there's there's a lot of times where two ships will just exchange two to three volleys and just have all misses. Oh yeah. In terms of ship to ship combat, its only intended function is to combat enemy missile swarms, uh, deny fighters and gunships area of access. Effectively, it is it's it serves as hybrid uh, anti missile and area denial for fighters. Yeah. In, in function, but I've noticed because they was used on the survival world, the, the moon survival world, these coupled with anti fighter stuff create a very um, psychological deterrent. Right, the missile tur or the gun turrets are pecking away at your ship, and then you just see a flak field in front of you. And even though flak isn't really a thing in Space Engineers, because shrapnel's not a thing, it does create a pretty heavy deterrent, and a lot of people are hesitant to try to push through it. So, effectively, all of the 400mm weapons are... Uh, these, these are just your dedicated anti-ship, uh, anti-heavy armor... Uh, ass kickers for lack of a better term yeah they are meant purely to point at a target so he, and fire so you don't have to see it anymore just for reference on the exact scale of these weapons um late world war ii american battleships used 16 inch rifles on their um, gun batteries these were 406 millimeter rifles so these 400 millimeter rifles are comparable in scale. There is a question I have received a few times, in which uh, there are obviously, you know, obviously as you go up in number of rifles, the size of the turret increases. But there is a single barrel turret that is only one by one. So what is stopping a player from taking a single 400 mil, uh, uh, the 400 millimeter siege cannon, the single barrel? and just spamming it across a ship instead of using a triple barrel. The simple reason for this is um, the triple barrel cannon is extremely durable. Yeah. It is an incredibly tough turret, and it can take multiple rounds from itself before it gets taken out. The siege cannon is very brittle. It falls apart very quickly. Something else to consider. A lot of the strength from these guns is their range, right? Oh, yes. Uh, so having three of them slaved together, if you don't have a, a turret slaving script, um, you're, instead of increasing the range of one turret, you're increasing the range of three turrets, essentially. And uh, this allows you to overcome the, the in-game limitation of the range. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's what I thought. Um, yes, the 400mm Demolisher, the triple barrel is is literally twice as accurate it has uh only half the inaccuracy that the siege cannon possesses so you get a lot more accurate shots at range uh with a single turret versus using say three uh three separate turrets yeah go for it. so the casemates uh so the single barrel casemate sort of acts like the siege cannon and the uh the twin casemate like the assault cannon and the assault cannon variant um uh, they do have more restricted firing arcs. However, as compensation, they have much quicker reload times. Uh, despite having uh, more limited traversal, they are much more durable than their counterparts. 
and uh, they can be embedded into armor, unlike the other turrets, which must be exposed. Uh, please don't mind my cat pawing at the door. So, effectively, you can better protect the casemates uh, in exchange for reduced firing arcs. Oh, that, first that sounded terrifying. All right, and then we'll do. <laughs> There's nothing left. <laughs> As a side note, with these guns, the displayed firepower here is significantly greater than assault weapons pack on the workshop. Yep. This is simply because, the, as Brock mentioned previously, this is the series-specific version that is used. The main assault weapons pack is weaker than this. However, it is still they are still significantly powerful weapons. Also, I picked an amazing acronym. Just the most amazing acronym that confuses the hell out of everyone. Forward Operating Base? Literally, it did not, it did not cross my mind until the series was already being filmed and then everybody was confused by it. The FOB 1000 is meant more as a close range, um, as a close range, um, just up yours kind of weapon. It's meant as you, you get up in it, you get up in their face, and you blow a giant hole in their. Sh it is also designed on larger ships to be used for um, uh, player made weapons, so rotor turrets, hinge turrets, that <sighs> sort of thing. <sighs> That's why it has five conveyor ports. Yes, I know. Uh, cr cry, Brock. Cry harder as I make rotor turrets. Yeah. Um, it is meant to fire at a very specific point. It is not meant purely to damage armor. It is meant to fire at a very specific section and make that very specific section not exist anymore. I, uh, I think that's a uh, good point to end on. You want to have any shout-outs for anyone? Any closing remarks? Or... Yeah, I would very much um, like to thank Alec Katie Y, my good Ukrainian friend, or Russian if that's what he prefers to be called. Uh, for doing the Russian translations for Assault Weapons Pack. Um, apparently, I had a lot of requests for Russian translations, so uh, my boys got them covered. And uh, I would also like to make a shout-out to uh, Primo Super T, uh, the biggest degenerate I have ever, be uh, I have ever befriended, uh, for not only contributing um, builds for screenshots used in Assault Weapons Pack promotional images, but also for promoting Assault Weapons Pack himself on his own builds.